Hello cave dwellers. Flight Path 737 is challenging. Challenging to the very definition of what a flight simulator is. In fairness, the game describes itself as an advanced pilot trainer, and not once is the word simulator used in the instructions or on the box. Amstrad computer user did, however, describe the game as the CPC-464's first flight simulator. Meanwhile, Chris Bourne over at Crash Magazine gave the game a score of 4%, having been unable to get off the ground on the ZX Spectrum version. So were unrealistic expectations set when the word simulator was used? Was this truly a simulator, or something entirely different? A pilot trainer, whatever that is. Let's find out. The goal is simple. Take off, fly over the mountain range, and land safely, allowing your passengers to take their summer holidays. Six levels of increasing difficulty throwing crosswinds, engine fires, and a more demanding flight path caused by higher mountains. The cockpit consists of dials and indicators for rate of climb or descent, airspeed, flat position, flight time, fuel remaining, artificial horizon, distance to destination, runway heading, undercarriage up or down, altitude, heading, ground warning and fire warning. Fire is bad, no afterburners here. And here the true nature of the game begins to unfold. It looks like we're lined up on the runway and we can blast off down it to take off. Well that's not the case because you can see the top strip representing the window means absolutely nothing. Our heading here is 188 degrees, the runway heading is 183 degrees, even though it looks like we're straight. You'd think you'd be able to look out the window and see you're pointing in the wrong direction before you take off, but no, not in Flight Path 737, because this is a simulation of procedures, which really is as exciting as it sounds. To successfully play this, you have to follow the correct procedures within the time, speed or height limits, tapping keys like a sweaty octopus, or, well, this happens. So you dutifully learn your lessons. Go back to the manual and become a better pilot learning from your mistakes and hopefully not killing too many people along the way, edging your way closer to success. Or not, as you can see from my many attempts here. Here my flaps went down before I was under 300 feet. Here I'm taking off and I raised my flaps too early, and I exceed the speed limit by not raising them soon enough. But here's your typical flight. We've taken off without messing up the flaps, and we begin our climb toward the mountains. Our ground warning light flashes as the mountains come into view, and you have to ensure you're high enough to clear them, in this case 5,000 feet which we're climbing to. When we hit 30 miles to go, the new runway heading appears at the bottom left box showing 198 degrees. Our current heading is 181, so we make the turn, and again, it's a good example of where the image means absolutely nothing, and the simulation is purely one of instrument flight. As we bank to the new heading, the horizon doesn't change, and even if you bank earlier with the mountain in view, it just remains dead straight. Banking, climbing, or descending, it doesn't matter, there's no reflection of what you're doing on the windscreen, it just follows the predefined show. At 10 miles out, we get the instrument landing system light, White is too high, red is too low, and green is the sweet spot. Finally, the runway comes into view, and you need to bring your speed down to between 160 and 170 knots with the flaps down, gear down, pull back to flare on touchdown, hit reverse thrust and throttle back. That's a lot of keys in a short space of time, and it takes a few attempts to master. Flaps, problems again, undercarriage problems, too fast, too slow without flaps, no, Nice green ILS approach this time, and yeah, short of the runway, thanks ILS. This time, nice approach, touchdown, altitude zero, so we've landed, reverse thrust. <sighs> Finally I did manage the landing. My approach was too high according to the ILS, I had to make a steep last minute dive, but levelled out for... A good landing, apparently, with about three seconds of fuel left. And that's the game. You can make it more challenging with the difficulty levels, but once you've mastered the procedures, well, you feel like you've beaten it, really. And beating it was the only reason I kept playing. It wasn't exactly for enjoyment. Is it a flight simulator, then? Well, yes, it is. It's not a simulation of flight physics, navigation, or combat. It's a simulation of procedure. By the book, repetitive, unexciting, and uneventful procedure. Flight after flight. 
And in a way, isn't that exactly what being a commercial airline pilot is all about? Until next time, cave dwellers.